So welcome back guys, my name is Wes and I am sitting on a trailer which is loaded with some pretty nice southern yellow pine logs. Um, these are super super nice logs down here, this one up at the top. I'm afraid it sat just a little bit too long out in the weather. Um, I don't know how useful it's going to be, but I mentioned on the last video that we're I'm starting the process of kind of thinning out our pine lot back here and those logs are destined for the mill. I'm cutting them into two by fours and about to start cutting some two by sixes just to have some extra pocket money but one of my friends caught wind of the whole thing and he said hey man I'm about to build a shed can you cut my lumber for the shed and I said sure so that's what we're gonna do today these logs right here are gonna fill a lot of the order but there are uh, quite a few pieces of the order that need to be much longer so let's go find some trees that'll suit the purpose and get them down Before we get started on these trees, I wanted to stop for a minute and kind of explain what I'm doing. I'm thinning these trees out, which is selective harvesting or selective cutting or whatever you want to call it. And that's to improve the overall health of the wood lot here, this pine lot. So the prevailing attitude uh, in society seems to be that the more trees you plant, the better off you are and I get comments all the time when you cut a tree down do you replant a tree in its place well no I don't because everything that I have here is too crowded and if I planted a tree in its place that would totally defeat the purpose so if you look at these trees behind me here there's this one that one this one and that one it's basically a cluster of trees and the tops may not be touching when the wind's not blowing but when the wind blows the tops touch each other and there's not a lot of room for these trees to reach their maximum potential so we're going to take two out of these four trees out and that'll leave the other two to get much much larger and stay healthy something else that's super important to remember about pine trees is that if you don't thin out pine trees they'll self thin they'll get too thick and they'll just start dying off and they'll thin themselves out and we don't want that to happen at all i'm much better off taking these trees out now when they're good nice green and healthy than when they start dying because at that point if i get 50 or 100 trees that are dead out here it becomes an emergency situation and i've got to get them down before they're rotten and that could even become dangerous so for the overall health of the forest and my uh, peace of mind some of these are coming down <laughs> Here's the next tree that I'm gonna take down here. And I didn't notice this when I chose this tree to take down, but this one's got a really bad spot on it. And it goes all the way from right here, which is about the three foot mark, all the way to way up here, which is probably a good seven feet. So uh, probably three and a half or four feet of this tree is taken up by this, what you would call a cat eye. And this is some spot of damage, possibly a genetic defect of some sort. But basically what has happened here is the tree had a problem and it has attempted to heal itself and it's successfully healed itself it's still alive by putting sap in this area right here to protect itself so 
so that's that's what has happened here unfortunately that wrecks the lumber the lumber that I cut out of this is not going to be structurally sound it'll be just a large patch of extremely dense pine sap so we're going to take it down anyway because there is there are logs above this spot but this basically wastes the whole bottom section of this tree and it'd be good to take this one down to allow a more healthy tree to grow in its place uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now with those two trees down, there's a lot more space for these two trees to reach their full potential. And as far as the canopy goes, they're not gonna be banging up against each other in windstorms anymore. That one looks dead right there, doesn't it? But it's just actually the sun shining on it. Lots more space up there. I've got two basic rules for this project and three if you include don't get killed by a tree but the two rules are don't leave any stumps whatsoever and clean as you go so I'm not cutting down any more than two trees at a time going ahead and getting all of that cleaned up before I go to any more so let's get these two stumps out of here and we'll get some logs cut up that time of year again we call that beggar's lice around here I'm going to violate my own rule about cutting no more than two trees down per round here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one down. That way I'll be able just to go ahead and get all three of these trees up with the tractor. And I think that's going to be enough logs for this project, possibly more than enough, which will be great. I'm going to take this one down. It's kind of in the middle of a cluster of trees, and that should open up this cluster uh, a fair amount to give the other trees a little bit of breathing space. And this is a very nice tree. It's a very straight tree and fairly large too so let's go ahead and get it down
right guys let's go ahead and start on this order of lumber here this is one that was on the trailers you just saw and this is the biggest one that i have this one is 14 inches on the small end and 16 inches on the big end very little taper in this log it's a 10 and a half foot long log and it only tapers down two inches which is really good so we're going to get two by fours out of this log and here's the kicker they're not going to be true two by fours they're going to be store-bought dimension two by fours or nominal dimension two by fours which will end up being an inch and a half by three and a half and i am going to I am going to add maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch to that three and a half to make it three and five eighths maybe just to allow for shrinkage and the reason that I'm cutting nominal dimension boards for this I don't usually do that because I like true dimension boards the reason that I'm doing that is uh, my friend that needs these boards he's using these with a Home Depot shed kit which has brackets and so forth and all of those brackets are going to be prefabbed for nominal dimension boards so that's why I'm going to be cutting all of this stuff store-bought dimensions so my plan here is to get a 10 and a half inch or 10 and three quarter inch cant cut it down into three smaller cants and then get my boards off of those three cans so i'm hoping that i can do that and if i can do that this one's going to produce a ton of two by fours I wanted to stop really quick before we start cutting the individual cans out of this larger can. I had a comment on the last video and they asked basically do you use this wheel or do you use the depth gauge to get your cuts and the answer I guess is kind of both. I use this wheel a lot to go from the top of the cant to a certain point in the cant to get a smaller cant out of it and it gives you very precise measurements and I use this as well for other purposes but right now the blade is at the level of the top of this cant and I want to get a three and a half inch cant out of this so what I want to do is go a half a turn that equals one inch another half a turn that equals another inch another half a turn and that equals three inches and at this point I want to go just a quarter of a turn so I have to kind of look at some of these marks up here to make sure I get it right so that's a quarter of a turn then I'll do two notches to account for the curve and now I should have exactly a three and a half inch cant I'm going to add a sixteenth to it just to kind of help with shrinkage something this thick and short shouldn't have a whole lot of shrinkage in the first place so I'll add a sixteenth just to account for that let's make this cut and see what it comes out to be Now I already did test this once at the other end of the can. I wasn't about to do the whole can and then make the whole thing the test piece, but you can see right here, it's ex <coughs> excuse me, it's exactly three and nine sixteenths. So that wheel you can see is extremely accurate.
Now at this point I'm ready to get my final cant out of this log and unfortunately at this point I can't measure from the top down, I have to measure from the bottom up and that's when I use the depth gauge here. So what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll put it on three and nine sixteenths and then I'll check it because this is not quite as accurate of a way to do it as this wheel right here. It's probably actually incredibly accurate. I just use this so much more than I use this. I'm, I'm more familiar with this. So let's just check it, make sure we're right. And if we're not, we'll adjust it. Let's see how we did. Not quite, we're about an eighth off. That'll do. So I can make one more cut on these cants here to get three more two by fours. And what I've done here is I've flipped all three of these over. And the reason that I did that is because this wane right here that you see on this cant, and there's some on the other end of this cant as well, but this wane was on the bottom on the bunks right here. I flipped this over so that I can cut, I can make my measurement from the bottom up and therefore make my waist the top inch half inch whatever it's going to end up being of these cants and that's going to cut a lot of this weighing off and leave me with nicer boards guys that was a very productive log I got 15 of these two by fours out of that log which is fantastic I need about 55 I think so uh, but that that's an extremely good start out of one log that's fantastic but it's so weird cutting these like this because I, I don't I'm I think I have cut some like this before because I see some on my fuel shed over there but it is so strange cutting these right here let's take one of these and lay it next to a true 2x4 and see how it compares it's kind of hard to tell with these two because they're so rough on the end and it makes this one look like it's a wedge basically but it's even uh, but yeah look at the difference here there's just a significant difference between those two I mean it's a, a half of an inch in either direction thickness and width it's a it's a pretty big deal um, I prefer these. I like these because they just look so cool. They're substantial. They look, it's like an old rustic type look to them. I really prefer these right here. Uh, but these, these up here will get the job done. There's been millions of houses built with these right here and one more shed come a couple of weeks from now. Well guys, we're getting there. I've got all the two by fours cut at this point. This is about 72 by fours or so. Now we need some one by material. So let's grab a log and get that done.
All right guys, so at this point I need to make some one by fours and if I was making this for myself, if I was doing a project around here, I would make it a full one inch by a full four inches. But again, this is designed to be used with a Home Depot shed build kit. So I need to cut whatever dimensions Home Depot is selling, which would be three quarters of an inch by three and a half. So that's what we're gonna do with this log. I'll probably make it like three and five eighths or three and 11 sixteenths, something like that, just so that it, it'll have a little bit of room to shrink because a one by four is going to shrink just a little bit uh, so this log has a lot more taper than the last one that y'all saw this one is 16 inches on this end 10 and a half on that other end I would like to get two cants out of this so that I can maximize production out of this log I don't know let's just see what we can do with it I mentioned the taper on this log and it really showed up in that cut if you see this is the large end and see how much that slab tapers down all the way to this end it's barely barely anything on the entrance right here Well guys, I'll have to say that that log was basically a train wreck. Y'all saw the taper on it and went from 10 and a half to 16. Besides that, it was very twisted. I'm not sure if y'all saw, but when I, was, when I was first turning the log over and over and rotating it on the mill, it took me several tries to get it where I wanted so that there wasn't a huge bow on the bottom side that would mess things up on the top. And I finally did get it pretty flat on the bottom, but that created issues in other places. It was just not a good log at all and there was as a result there was a ton of waste in it so unfortunately i only got looks like about eight usable boards this little strip right down here is way too thin the very bottom one is way too thick so i may run these bottom ones through my planer i'll think about that and that'll give me two more but either way train wreck of a log but i did get did get some usable boards out of it thankfully well guys here's what we ended up with there's our stack of two by fours right over there of a certain length there's another certain length of two by fours right here and our one buys are kind of on this side it's all a little bit mixed up but it's all here and he should be able to make him a pretty decent shed out of this so i'm going to deliver this here pretty soon and uh, that'll be it for this job and I've still got a few logs left over three logs still over there between what was on the trailer and what I cut down so not bad before I wrap up this video I want to go out to the pine trees really quick and just kind of show you all how it looks after I got it all cleaned up all the pine tree tops out and the limbs and so forth and uh, just kind of show you what it looks like after I get done because logging is 
it can make a huge mess of things and I don't want that to be the case out here I want to leave it a whole lot better before than or after than it was before I got there this is the first area that we took down a couple of trees from and uh, really it looks a whole lot like they've never really been there and that was kind of my goal you see the stumps right here cut flush with the ground or almost flush with the ground there's another one right over there and there is a limb it looks like I missed one there but it looks pretty clean for the most part and here's the spot where I cut down that second tree you can see there's a, a wedge left right here that I took out of the tree and there's probably a limb right up there where the top was but besides that it's very very clean and that was kind of my goal here well guys that is going to do it for this video i really appreciate you watching i was not able to film more than a couple of logs being milled out of that batch of logs there and that was just mainly because i'm just kind of short on time i needed to get those logs done and get them delivered but uh, a lot of talking in this video i feel like i think i did a whole lot of explaining things and sometimes i get sometimes i get mixed reviews when i do that in the comment section so feel free to leave a comment just make sure it's a nice one and uh, i'll try to respond to you um what else there was something else i wanted to say uh oh the two by fours that we cut on the last video somebody just came and bought 21 of those so that was good uh, i've still got 112 113 something like that left to go and uh that was pretty good i plan on cutting some two by sixes and stacking those up and just having those for sale as well uh, had a lot of interest had a lot of people texting me or messaging me about the boards but not a lot of people coming to get them but i'm happy to sell some of them and i hope to sell more um but that's going to do it for this one i'm going to quit yakking i guess i'll see y'all on the next one what are you doing out here you want to come to the house with me let's go to the house